But today I'm very excited to present to you another great person because we are right now sitting in Vienna, in Austria, during one of the conferences about blockchain. And right with me is representative of royalty family in Vienna, in Austria. So it will be great to see you here and to hear why you decided to make this impact to blockchain industry. Well, thank you. Welcome to Vienna. It's mm -hmm. a great pleasure to come. I didn't ask you, you're coming from? I'm coming from Poland. From Poland? Oh, yes. great. So, very historically related. Very great in a long history and, yes. good, and, good, and good relations. Mm -hmm. Very good relations. Um, to your question of why blockchain, mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm a child of the internet. Okay, yes. I, I, when I started, when I was 18 years mm -hmm. and I started my education, what was happening? We were building the internet. I had an email address, and when I talked to people, hey, I've got an email address, mm -hmm. like, what's that? You know, what do you need that for? You know, uh, There were no mobile phones as we know them today. Yes, you had big suitcases, you could mm -hmm. use a radio telephone, but mm -hmm. it, the, the internet, the web, the revolution, the, the bursting of the bubble, financial crisis is that we have experienced. I have lived and gone with it. Um, I studied mechanical engineering, but I got in because of the internet, because of the telecommunications, I got into the telecommunications industry. So I accompanied the whole deregulation process in Europe of opening a market, liberalization. Yeah? It was a real revolution. Yeah? And uh, in these processes, you have a very special phenomenon. It is innovation. It is um, a lot of people believing in something. And very important aspect of this is believing in an open world. And for me, the blockchain technology, it, it, in theory, it has existed for a long time. I mean, right. ledgers, we have used ledgers for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. But the ledger with a decentralized computing system is a direct extension of ARPANET, Internet, the web. It, it, the prerequisites in the network and in the power of computing of the personal computer, we have computers at home today that did have more power to compute than our mainframe computers did in the 80s. So everything is coming together. And you can consider the blockchain like the missing link of the internet data revolution. It is really that which has the possibility or gives us the tools as everyday people to change the way we have done things for hundreds of okay. years. So that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. I want to be part of this. Mm -hmm. My philosophy as a person, maybe also as a family, is to have a vision and to do things which are good for all of us. Yeah? Um, maybe also a personal note to me very personally that in about 2006, I made a very f fundamental decision. I was going to leave the commercial world I sold my companies, and together with my wife, mm -hmm. we founded an, an NGO, and we are working on a 100% charity organization. Okay. So I also changed the way I look at the world. And I decided two years ago to re-enter this world mm -hmm. because with the coming of the blockchain, I said, here we now really have the tools to do that, what is necessary for the common good. Yes, and we really have an opportunity to change the, um, the way things work and how people think. You say about charity and you are involved in blockchain. In my opinion, if you combine blockchain technologies with charity, with transparency of blockchain, that every person can see where donation is going, it can be really a huge impact uh, yes. in the world. In your yes. Do you have such a plan to... Yes. go in that direction that, yes. that, because you know blockchain is why it is great one with this transparency yes blockchain has I say the blockchain combined with decentralized computer mm -hmm. station, and if you want to take it one step even further as an open source project yes it has a, a huge huge potential because like you said it, it makes it transparent it is not controlled by any one person. Yes. Right. And it has the ability to evolve. Because 
the biggest problem we have with most data systems and data centers today, they are so established in the way they were configured 10, 20, 30 years ago, maybe 40 years ago, and if you want to try to change that or do something in that system, it's almost impossible. But the blockchain, through its, its nature, has the possibility to say, okay, we need to take another fork, we need, to, we need to mutate. Because, well, because maybe the conditions that when we started have changed or don't quite apply or we have some new experience. So you just agree. If everybody agrees, okay, we change. And the old is still there, just as well documented. You see the change and you're off working in the new future. Do you remember one first time you heard about maybe blockchain, about Bitcoin? I don't know, what was your story when you first time heard and you get involved? I couldn't tell you the date, mm -hmm. but I can tell you definitely, 100, it was Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. okay. It was Bitcoin because uh, it ran across me somewhere. Yeah. It, it was Bitcoin and I said, hmm, what's this? What is this? <laughs> what's this? And then I started delving into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. today, today we know the history. Well, I know the history because also before I came mm -hmm. uh, to this event, mm -hmm. I made sure that I, I knew a little bit about history. And it's really interesting that in 2019, mm -hmm. it's the 18th birthday mm -hmm. of the blockchain idea in the modern sense. Yep. Uh, we made interview with father of blockchain technologies, Costa Neta, mm -hmm. uh, a couple months ago, and it's really amazing uh, how it's started. Now, let's talk a little bit, like, uh, we got idea about blockchain, your involvement. Uh, you know, in my opinion, it will be great also to hear what is regular daily life is looking, uh, like your personal daily life, like uh, you are a royalty family, what you are doing in, during every single day? Communicating. Basically, if you want to put boil it down to mm -hmm. the, 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 the core, mm -hmm. our organization's main activity is mm -hmm. networking, okay. bringing people together, uh, passing information, talking to people. Uh, it's dialogue. Um, so f for us in our charity work and also uh, because we work on all levels, we work from a very grassroots level where we help schools, orphanages, hospitals, so we run aid projects but it goes right up to bringing people together on organizational level, on governmental levels, uh, also to do mediation. Maybe some countries are having some issues and other countries cannot talk to them, so we try to find a yeah, manner for di dialogue. Yeah? Okay. So uh, communication is done on all levels. Of course, email is still predominant, mm -hmm. but of course all the uh, social media channels, uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, all of these play a role. Yeah, and we try to use the tools that we have to create an awareness, mm -hmm. okay? To bring attention to something. So like us sitting here today, yes, this will create attention to this technology, but not only the technology, but maybe what we should be doing with this technology. Because as many people have used many different metaphors uh, to explain every tool, blockchain is a tool. Yep. And uh, you can use it pretty much for everything. But it's like a broom, you know, we need a broom to sweep, to keep the room clean, but somebody can take this broom also and use it for destructive purposes, yeah? So, and the same is with the blockchain. So, what do I think, for example, is important characteristic of the blockchain? Well, one is it's open and it's transparent. Mm -hmm. In other words, people should see what's happening. It should be distributed. This way, we are dependent on a fixed structure, infrastructure, uh, dependency on small groups and organizations. And it should f really try to focus on that which is good for everybody. Yeah, so I say we as technologists, if I can use that term, those who are using it, building things, trying to do things with it, we have a certain responsibility to make sure that we use it in this manner. Okay. Because this will uh, really, I think, be a progress for our society, for mankind as a whole. It can get us, it could get us out, or we could use it to get ourselves out of the deadlock in structures, uh, say in the financial world, in the government structures, in all of these global situations. Okay. Yesterday we made a panel about blockchain regulations. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now we are in Austria. Uh, 
you are maybe I don't know how you are involved in, in um, politic uh, situation in Austria, but can you tell us um, Austria government is it planning to make some progress with blockchain regulations similar what we see right now in Malta in Switzerland or not or if not when they do are they planning to do this I think we have in Austria sort of a characteristic of wait and see what happens okay <laughs> uh, this is very much part of our nature um, I don't think that there are too many countries that will take an aggressive uh, mm -hmm. approach such as Malta or mm -hmm. Liechtenstein or also now Benelux, uh, Luxembourg mm -hmm. because it's a nature of small countries to make quick decisions quick, yes. uh, to try to take advantage of uniqueness which can improve their economical situation right because, I mean Malta for example it's an island it's yeah. a beautiful place wonderful people I like it I've been there quite a few times Actually, I also had a very interesting talk with the Prime Minister's, Prime Minister's office exactly on this subject to understand uh, you know, how they see the world and how they want to regulate or not regulate. And um, it is important for them because it can generate activity, commercial activity in their country, Absolutely. which otherwise they would not have. All right? But for, uh, for large countries, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's 0, 0.0 something, something percent. Like, yeah, we got other problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the same is here, you know. <laughs> yeah, Austrians tend to be very observant in the process, but I think we have a very solid community in the country. Yes, we have a very innovative uh, mentality. Um, I will say government structures not necessarily always supporting, so it's very much a self determination. Okay, yeah. but maybe on to brag about Austria a little bit. Um, even though we're very bureaucratic and very complicated sometimes, we do have the highest percentage of little giants. Have you heard the term of little giants? Mm, not much. Okay. Little giants is an expression used for enterprises mm -hmm. that are on a uh, global scale or they're not particularly big, but in their sector, they are number one or number two okay. in the world. Right? And Austria has the highest percentage of these types of companies. These are just very innovative, very determined individuals to do something. And so you will find the Austrian blockchain community is similar. Yes? You know, even they're working against the incredible odds. Mm -hmm. yes. They will follow it. Okay. Yeah? Yes, regardless of regulation or not regulation and so forth. So it's, 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 a, it's interesting. Okay. Uh, now let's go back a little bit again. Uh, what you do during daily life, I mean, uh, like personal. Do you like to read some books, watch movies maybe? If yes, what kind of? Oh, all the above. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a media junkie. Okay. Right? I love to read books. Unfortunately, I have usually too little time to read mm -hmm. books. Um, at the moment, it's really down to almost zero, but I, I used to try to read a book a week. Wow. So, you know, and it, everything from something serious to mm. just mindless entertainment mm. to take your mind off of, you know, the things that are going on in your head, just to, to take a break. Yeah. So, on um, television, I use mostly because I don't have time to go to the cinema, although I love going to the cinema. So, I use, I use the television to pick up on the news, to pick up on technology programs. And sometimes I also spend quite a bit of time uh, listening to some historical projects, uh, programs that usually come to me at 1 2 o'clock in the morning and they're usually very well prepared and it gives us good insight into why and how things work today the way they work. It's all dependent on what happened in the past. Uh, okay, if you read so much books, uh, do you remember maybe the best one during maybe the last couple of years which made huge impact on you? Now you got me because <laughs> I can't remember the title. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, uh, mostly, but these are books mostly that were related to political development uh -huh. and um, how how there's a difference in mentality mm -hmm. and a way of thinking. Yes, and you need to read different books to get from different perspectives to get a, a picture. Okay. Uh, do you have also you are spending uh, because it takes time? Charity, doing blockchain involvement, charities. Uh, how much time 
you're trying to spend with your family and manage this because it's not so easy to manage family uh, relationship and uh, doing charity well, and business. Actually, I'm very fortunate. I'm a really, really lucky guy. Okay. Really. And it's a, a simple secret. It's uh, it business, charity, and activity. It's mm -hmm. a family business. So okay. uh, our association, my wife is the president because okay. actually the idea of our charity, the fund, uh, the Association for the Further in Peace and our award, the Flame of Peace. That's her idea. So she's the president of our association. Uh, in the family, uh, in the in the private office on the financial side, it's one of my sons and myself. On the IT side, it's another son mm -hmm. and myself. So uh, we're always together. We're always working together. So I don't have to uh, separate okay. office nice. and family. Okay. So okay? everybody involved. Everybody's involved. So, um, and today, actually, my wife would be here, but because we had to, because I decided I'm coming for all three days to this event, and we just could not get rid of all obligations. So we split today. My wife is taking care of one of our responsibilities, and I, I'm here today. And one son will come this morning. The second, uh, the, the eldest son, he is with his son today. So in the morning, he has to, Saturday. He has to take it, take care of son, but he will come in the evening. Mm -hmm. So you will have a chance to meet almost everybody. Okay. So this is great, and I, if anybody can do it, I recommend it. If you can do it, everything together, it 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 really is. But everybody's happy. You don't uh, force your, for example, kids, uh, your children to. No, no, do, no. They, are, they uh, wanted to join you this path. Yes. Yes. Okay, and yeah. they feel happy with what they are doing. Yes. Everybody. Sometimes more, sometimes less. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like you said. You know, everybody has his ideas, his dreams. Mm -hmm. you know? The eldest son, he who is really into IT, has a, a computer science degree, decided he wants to become a teacher, so he's gone back to university. Okay. So at the moment his role in the organization is not so really limited because he's trying to do two degrees in two years, so to be a teacher. Right. So, yeah. Thanks uh, a lot for such great interview and communication with you. It was a pleasure to meet you and thanks for watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, BTC TV. Bye for now. A pleasure, sir.